Hi, I thought I'd give you a quick tour of this Scamp 13 I just picked up. Uh, this was a sudden thing. I've always wanted a Scamp, but I did not really go looking for one. One just happened into my life, and well, I, I let it happen. So we're down here on the bank of the Illinois River in LaSalle Township, Illinois. And as you can see, we've kind of got a thing going here with vehicles. Um, that's the Tiki Bago there. And that's M3, the former ambulance, now camper. That is what's left of our screen house that's gonna be torn down very soon. And there is the Scamp. So this is a 1993 Scamp 13, and I believe it is the deluxe model, which just means it has oak cabinets. And Scamps are very nice trailers. They're, they're for a specific market. You can see they're made out of two pieces of fiberglass that are molded and then sealed together down the edge. This makes them very, very lightweight, and it makes them last a long time. They've got a bit of a cult following, kind of like Airstreams. Uh, there's a whole big community, and really nice is the fact that the company that makes them is still in business, and they still make them exactly the same. So, like, you can get parts, like if that metal falls off or something, you can get that replaced. They still sell the windows, and uh, that is a really nice thing if you're looking at an old camper. So a quick tour of the outside here. It's not in terrible shape. Um, you know, it's got a brand new spare tire uh, that needs a cover before the elements get to it. It does have a little bit of fiberglass decay here. This is the worst of it actually in the whole trailer. I'm not too worried about that. The whole fiberglass surface is kind of powdered. Uh, you know how fiberglass gets in time if it's been sitting out in the sun. So the fiberglass does need to be worked on. The decals are in okay shape. But again, the company's still in business, so I can just go get more decals, so that's nice. The lid for the power here has come off. I can just replace this whole thing. But look at this, and it'll give you a secret into how scamps are built. They use rivets for everything. And that has pros and cons. One of the cons is, is that you can't remove rivets without drilling them out, and then you have to replace them. And I'm not too afraid of that, but uh, it is kind of a pain. And I'll probably have to replace this whole unit because I do not think I can get just the door, and the bottom's broken too. No big deal. It's got the five lug wheels and the dust cap there. You can grease the wheels there, so that's nice. I have an invoice that shows that the axle was replaced just recently, just a couple of years ago, which is great. These have those torsion axles that have the rubber bushings that wear over time, and after 30 years, it's time to replace it, so that's something I don't have to do. These are the vents for the three-way fridge. It's your classic Dometic RS2201, and I haven't tested it yet, but it looks like it still works. I think it'll be fine. And here you have the city water connection for regular old city water power. Who's up with that? Someone has messed with that. I'll have to see what's going on there. And this is the drain for the sink. Yeah, that's all gonna need some work. Basically, any water that comes out of the sink will just come out of this hole. Now, I have reason to believe that there was a gray tank in this unit because it has this. This is a stinky slinky holder. That is where the blue hose goes that you use to empty out waste. There is no bathroom in this, so I don't know the deal there. And I, uh, you can see here it says drain outlet, but I crawled under there and, well, there's no holding tank. There's like straps and stuff. So I'll have to see what's going on there. Interesting thing about these is because they're fiberglass, I mean, this, this outside wall, it's also kind of the inside wall, and everything that's attached to the walls has to come through the fiberglass, and under each one of these caps is a rivet. Everything is riveted, even, even like things like this. And why is that? It's because fiberglass doesn't hold screws very well. Rivets are actually better for fiberglass. Now, this is the gravel shield for this nice window here, and as I drove it here from South Dakota, the hardware kind of wore out. These broke, um, you can see here, it's, the rivets are actually wearing through the metal, and that one fell off completely. So you're probably thinking, oh, well, you're going to have to fabricate those. But no, again, Scamp is still in business. So I was able to just go to Scamp's website and buy a replacement hardware kit, all the hardware for that. It's like 25 bucks, which seems like a lot of money, but I can get it. So <laughs> it's all right. It's worth the 25 bucks. The propane tank sits right here. That is a really, really old regulator. I will probably replace that at some point. 
And there's your chains. It's a one and seven eighths inch ball, which is weird and annoying. This is fairly old. I will probably uh, consider getting a new jack. Battery box that is actually empty. Apparently the previous owner used like a goal zero or something and kept that inside. So I'll have to figure out how, what I'm gonna do about that. And then on the outside here, see another big window and a light. And up on the roof, this is a very big vent. You know, most RVs have a 14 inch vent. This thing's twice that size. And then that's because it's also an escape hatch. If like you were in this and it got rolled over somehow and you couldn't get out the door, that whole thing flips up and you can crawl out. Interesting uh, little thing. This is an old style water filler. You slide that over and you can pour the water in there. And as you can see, that's gonna need some attention. But that is not unexpected for a rig this old. Classic light there. All right, shall we go inside? Now, I have done nothing with this. So this is not a glamor tour. This is a, hey, look at this thing I just got tour. All right, here we go. I'm gonna switch to wide angle. And here we go. Again, this isn't really set up for stuff here. So as you can see how this works here, this obviously goes down like this, and this goes here <clears throat> like that. And that is the dinette. This folds down into there and creates a bed. And then this extra piece of wood here goes here to kind of seal off the bed. But when you're sitting here, I have to tell you, it's really pretty darn comfy sitting here. Um, you know, I don't know if these are the original cushions or not, but 30 years, uh, they're in pretty good shape and they're, they're very comfy. These are the deluxe cabinets. Usually these would just be fiberglass all through here, but these are oak. And honestly, I would prefer the fiberglass. It weighs less and I don't know. I feel like the oak detracts from the aesthetic of the fiberglass, which most people would probably like, but I don't know. I kind of like the fiberglass. <laughs> Yeah, that light needs some help. No big deal. Those are pretty common. These are classic, um, you see over here, these are a classic scamp thing, these lights, and they're all pretty worn out. So I will probably replace those. That's a good thing to have, except that it's out. I'll have to replace that. And carbon monoxide detector, also a good thing. So for electric, there, there is a shore power. You plug it in, you get these all these outlets to work. But that's it. Um, Basically, when you plug in shore power, all you're getting is these outlets to turn on. And then under here, there is a converter that should charge the battery and provide 12 volts to the 12 volt outlets. But I haven't found any 12 volt outlets. Usually there are a couple of places where you can plug in something 12 volts and I don't see any. So if you plug into shore power, basically all you're doing is charging your batteries, which isn't a bad thing. But uh, I might change that. A couple rolls of paper towels. It has two water systems. This is a hand pump system that probably still works. There's no water in it. And when you want water, you just go doot, 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 and water comes out. It's very, very simple. This one here is for if you're hooked up to shore, uh, shore water, you would just turn that on and water would come out. Pretty simple. This is your classic Wedgwood stove. I, this originally had a Suburban in it, so this might be a replacement, but I tested it and it works just fine. You, uh, you turn it on, you have to use a, a lighter. Well, here, I'll show you. Um, the previous owner has a ridiculous supply of these. And there you go. So yeah, a little bit of fire. It's perfectly fine for this. Some junk up here in the cabinets. Uh, you're your classic Camco adapter. This is actually a 30 amp unit. And I think that's because there was an option to have air conditioning. So here's that vent that's in the ceiling. You could uh, close that off and put a traditional RV air conditioner up there, and then you'd need the 30 amps. But the previous owner apparently used this. And I have not figured out quite how. Um, I don't know where that went, and I probably won't use it at all. I mean, did it fit in that door? And then there was a vent outside? I, I don't know. I don't think that's gonna get used. Now over here, this is, again, it's a mess. I know it's a mess. It's a mess because I haven't done anything with it yet. 
There's reflectix for all the windows covering, which is great on summer days. This, I think, is somehow the puzzle of the air conditioner stand. I don't know. Again, that would have to be figured out. All these wires here go to these solar panels. There's 400 watts of solar. That's so much solar, it won't even fit on the roof. So that would have to be installed on the ground. That's a lot of solar for a little rig like this. And there's a little tiny PWM solar controller in here somewhere. But uh, the way this works is this, you take these bars down and that folds down and then you have a couch. So it can either be bunk beds or a couch. These are really for kids. Um, an adult could maybe sleep on here, but there's like a weight limit of 120 up here. So eh, I don't know. And then there, another cabinet, not stuff, nothing too surprising there. And then the closet, and guess what's in the closet? Yeah, I mean, it's a closet. There's some stuff up there. What's this? That is a replacement shore power. Oh, that's the other side of this. So this is a replacement shore power thing, but this is the male side. And the one that's out there now is, well, it's it's also male, but I, that would require a special cord. I couldn't use that with what I have now. What is that? I don't know what that's for. And this is a nice metal rod. I don't know what that's for. I've got a lot of stuff to figure out. But anyway, the, the walls are covered with this stuff called rat fur. Let's see if I can find some that's well lit. Yeah, so this is rat fur. And underneath this rat fur is this stuff, Reflectix installation, which um, a lot of people would say that's not how you do in Reflectix. Reflectix needs an air gap to work. If you attach it to something, it doesn't work. But with fiberglass, it's a little different because you do kind of have a little bit of an air gap with fiberglass because of the way it's constructed. So Reflectix on fiberglass works better than Reflectix on metal. It's still not ideal, but it's, it's enough to keep the chill off. Now you may have noticed there's no bathroom there are models of this that do have a bathroom. What they do is they shorten this counter and then eat up this whole space here, and it's just not worth it. What most people do is they put a porta potty in this door and they open that up and pull the porta potty out, which, if you're sharing the space, can be a little interesting. But uh, eh. so this is the fridge. This uh, this is broken, which is very common. I have to get a replacement one of those, and it even has a little tiny freezer. Oh, I'm opening it the wrong way. Little tiny freezer. You might be able to squeeze a Ben & Jerry's in there. But it's a fridge. I will not be replacing this anytime soon unless there's a reason to. I mean, I could get a regular old dorm fridge and put it in there. Depending on how I use it, that might be better. There's some accoutrement in there. Pretty good amount of storage. This hole is actually where the furnace would go. If it came with a propane furnace, it would fit in the spot, but it did not have a propane furnace. And there's the circuit breakers. All right, now I wanna show you this one last thing here. You notice I just said there's no propane heater. So what do you do for heat? Well, this down here is very interesting. This black box right there, that is what is called a cheap Chinese diesel heater. And it's not entirely installed. I think the previous owner tried to install it and didn't have any success. That's a diesel tank back there. And that's how the heat was going to work. You fill that tank with diesel and this thing burns the diesel in a very controlled way and then blows out air and it would have come out of that hole. So I've got that all to figure out. That uh, metal box in there was the, the silver metal box in there was the converter for, for power. One really cool thing about these is the screens. I really like how they did the screens here. You undo that snap and then the screen door does that. And it's like a really nice secure screen door, although apparently there's a gap at the top and it's filled with bags. I will fix that. I, I just think that's a great way to do the screen doors. It also gives you the space here that you can hang things that it's kind of outside. Like you could hang wet socks here or something. I don't know, I'm gonna to have to experiment with that. But it's kind of a nice design for a screen. I think it's pretty cool. Now the doors are a little weird. You can see on the inside here that they're very curved to match the side here. And a lot of people have tr trouble with that. They tend to pop open while you're driving. And indeed that happened to me several times. And I'm gonna do a little bit of work on that. But 
from research, it seems like this is actually the problem. It's the hinge. This thing here is brass, and apparently over time it flattens, and that causes it to sit wrong in the hinge, and the whole door drops, and that causes this part here to not line up properly with this part here. And you can see here that this doesn't line up right. So something has moved. So I ordered some parts from Scamp this morning, and there. And we will see how that works. The sun is such that I'm in every shot here. Anyway, that's the Scamp 13. I'm not exactly sure what we're gonna do with it. I might just park it for the winter and then uh, deal with it as a project in the spring. But I think it's a nice little addition to the van that if I'm gonna travel with other people, I can kind of tow this and it's like a guest bedroom, um, and they hold their value. So no matter what I do to it, it isn't a loss of money. So, uh, you know, subscribe to the channel if you want to see my progress with this. But again, it's probably not going to be next until next year. That's it. I will see you down the road. Thanks for watching.